Hi guys and welcome to another uh, Raspberry Pi technical tutorial. In this one we're going to be continuing to talk about using the Piduino package which is the ability to compile sketches in the Arduino IDE on say Windows and run those sketches on a Raspberry Pi. And again, there's separate videos to discuss the installation and the configuration of this. But this video is going to talk about a particularly elegant technique for copying the binaries from the Windows machine during development time so you can run them and test them on the Raspberry Pi. So let's go through the story in this. In our story, we'll imagine you've got a Raspberry Pi, which is where you want to run your executables, and you've got a Windows machine, which has the Arduino IDE installed upon it. What we want to do is we want to open up a share, a Samba share, from your Raspberry Pi Linux Raspbian operating system, so we can mount that share on the Windows PC. We will then compile our programs on the Windows PC, save those programs to what the Arduino IDE thinks is a local file system, which is actually the share opened up on the Raspberry Pi, and then we'll be able to execute them directly on the Pi. When we've run our test, all we'll need to do is make a change to the sketch, save it again, and it will immediately be available for execution. So let's go see that in principle. So here I've got a MOBA Xterm. I love this uh, this tooling. And MOBA Xterm provides an SSH shell into my remote Raspberry Pi. So running on my Pi, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the Samba software. So I'm going to run sudo apt get install Samba. Now what Samba is, it's a... Uh, Linux based package which allows us to export wind, uh, Linux file systems or directories so that they can be mounted on a Windows environment. Think of it like a, a Windows share mechanism so that we can export directories and file systems from Raspbian and be able to access them directly on our Windows machines. So uh, I've been running the uh, sudo apt-get install Samba and that'll take a few minutes to run. Okay, now that Samba is installed, we can get on with the rest of the steps. Uh, Samba has the concept of Samba user IDs. These are the user IDs that you present or you log in as when you access it from your Windows machine. So we need to set up a, a user ID password for our uh, local Raspbian user ID. So my local Raspbian ID is, of course, pi. So I'm going to run the command um, sudo smb, which is samba password minus a for the user ID pi. It's going to prompt me for my smb password. This is the password we're going to present from the Windows machine. I'm going to make it raspberry because, well, all raspberries are pie, or all pies are raspberry. So we're now raspberry. Uh, now I'm in my home directory. I'm going to create a directory here called Arduino. It doesn't have to be called Arduino, but it makes sense as this is the directory where I'm going to keep Arduino sketches. So I've created a directory called Arduino. Nothing special about it. It's just a, a directory called Arduino. Now we're going to go up to the Etsy Samba directory, which is where we find the configuration files for Samba. I'm going to edit that. I happen to use VI. I'm going to edit the Samba configuration file. And down at the bottom of that file, I'm going to insert some new statements. First of all, we're going to export a share from the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to call it Arduino. I'm going to say that the directory we're exporting is going to be my home pi Arduino directory. That's a directory I just created. 
I'm going to say the valid users for login are the user pi and I'm going to say read only equals no and that basically allows me to do read write on the home pi Arduino directory structure. So I save that file so I've changed the uh, smb.con file to have those entries in it. Now I'm going to restart the Samba daemon because when we installed Samba it automatically started now I'm going to restart it so it can take advantage of the changes that I've made to the configuration file SMB D so sudo system control restart SMB D that goes and cooks for a few moments and what that's doing is that's stopping and restarting the Samba daemon and it's finished I'm going to go back to my home directory and then into the Arduino directory and of course there's nothing there. Now, good stuff starts to happen now. I open up a Windows share. Now notice that my, that my I'm sorry, my notice that my Raspberry Pi address is 192.168.1.103. I open up a Windows Explorer and I visit 192.168.1.103. And it says it's found a directory called Arduino. I try and enter the Arduino directory. It now prompts me for a user ID and password. I enter my user ID, which is uh, Pi, and my password, which is Raspberry. I enter it, and there we go. Now, if I create a new file in here, new file, text document, hello, and go over to my Linux, I'm sorry, my Raspberry environment, run ls, there's hello.txt, I come over here, I delete it from Windows, delete it, rerun ls, and it's gone. So what we have now is a directory which is visible on Windows, which when we put and get files, put and delete and edit files in here in Windows, they show up on my Linux environment. Now with that in mind, let's now open our Arduino IDE on Windows. Let us create a sketch and we'll put in a console.println hello from setup. Excellent. Now I'll save this sketch and what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it in the Arduino folder. So uh, that would be slash slash 192.168.1.103 enter and then into the Arduino folder and I'm going to call this sketch test number one. Okay, so I've now saved this sketch in the Arduino folder. If I run the ls command there is my directory for test one and there is my test one dot eno file, if I was to cat the contents of that file, test1.eno, we would see it's got my code in it that I've been editing in my Arduino editor here. Now from the sketch menu, export compiled binary. Now what that's doing is that's compiling this sketch and when the compilation has finished, it will save the resulting binary in the directory where the sketch can be found. If I now run ls here, notice I now have test1.eno b plus bin. That is the binary for my executable. That was the one that was just generated by the Arduino IDE. Now if we run this file, test1.eno blah blah blah, if we run it, it says hello from setup. Now where did that come from? That was the program that I put in here. If we uh, stop that program, go back to the IDE, change it, console.println, oh, I don't know, millis to show me the current milliseconds, save this, recompile it, again the, uh, the sketch export compiled binary, boom, it's done. If we look at the file, there it is, test1.ino, now if we try and run it, it may come back and say the text file is busy. That's okay. That's just a, a slight distinction be possibly between the timestamps and the machines. The file is flagged as busy, but if we keep on running it, after a couple of seconds, it works. And as we can see here, what we've got, if we pipe that into more, is 
hello from setup and then the current milliseconds and as you can see it's a, it's a standard Arduino sketch and that pretty much concludes the demonstration I wanted to show to recap what we did was from nothing we installed Samba on our Raspberry Pi we then configured the Samba daemon to know about a directory which I call which I called Arduino that exists on the Raspbian file system we restarted the Samba daemon we went over to our Windows environment we showed that we could access the now exported directory structure from the Raspbian file system on our Windows environment we then started our Arduino IDE on Windows which has been configured to compile to Raspberry Pi code we then saved the sketch into the exposed directory which was exposed from the Raspberry Pi and then when we compile our sketch using the export compiled binary that results in a binary executable being saved on the file system which Windows thinks is local but which is actually remote and lives on the Raspberry Pi and then we're able to execute the executable and that's about as uh, efficient as we can get so uh, I hope you found this video useful there'll be many more to come in the future thanks for now bye bye